Alright, let's start the intro. So this is Kim. Kim runs the wood shop at Pratt. And this is, who's the dog? Prim or Primrose? Primrose, okay. And so we're going to be talking about leather working and wood shop working and how they apply to everything we do in jewelry, leather, armor, and uh, the overall Pratt structure. So, Kim, what was your first project in leather? Yeah, well, my first project in leather is not a typical one. Um, it was this beautiful case right here. Mm -hmm. And so with um, leather working, it's a really common crossover for woodworkers because if you just want a basic set of leather working tools, mm -hmm. a lot of them are already woodworking tools. Okay. And then, then a lot, a lot so of, yeah. What do, you, what do you mean that they're, they're also woodworking tools? Are we talking like chisels, planes? Yeah, um, chisels for sure can be used. Okay. Let me know if they do landscaping. That's okay. Yeah. I don't know if they can hear the leaf blower over us. All right. So we're, we're just going to go with ignore it. Ignore that. Um, yeah, so definitely you have an awl already. Mm -hmm. for Maybe it's differently used, um, sort of like compass or things that make a lot of circle shapes. You're going to need to make a lot of right angles or a combination square. We have a lot of marking knives for just slicing, you know, or creating curves. Um, we might have a lot of tools that will help you make circles or things like that because sure. we're always trying to kind of, you, you know, maybe use like a French curve type, you know, things to create unique shapes. And then we have a lot of sharp tools that we want to create covers for. Okay. And so we have a lot of needs of like creating kind of unique um, little cases that might be for carving tools or those types of things. So, okay. Yeah. So when you're working with leather, um, we're talking about vegetable tan leather right now. Uh, we're yeah. talking about that in class and then with your bag, this is also vegetable tan yes. leather. Um, how is it different and how is it the same when working with wood in terms of tooling? What are the shaping processes that are similar mm -hmm. and what, what's different? Good question. Um, I mean, you're always going to start out with designing a project and doing layout. Mm -hmm. um, and then like even down to edge treatment. So with wood, you don't want a piece of furniture that has these sharp 90 degree sides. So learning how to take care of your edges. Um, in later projects, you can see that that's my least favorite part is burnishing. <laughs> And so I am intentionally leaving them just more rustic and not worrying about them. See, so Kim also does not burnish the edges of their work. Yeah. Um, I did a pauldron demo, and I was like, you could burnish it, but if you're going to be clashing in this armor, it's going to get beat up anyway. Yeah. So it's so really... So there's like back. a lot... Like, I did some initial burnishing, but by an expert's mind of what a burnish looks like, this is just like step one, and I got worn out after step one. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have several time lapses on the on the pauldron demo as I'm doing carving and general shaping and probably three hours of actual, you know, poking the leather just to get all the shaping right. And nobody wants to do that. Yeah. So try and keep it simple. Yeah. Um, I would also say another crossover is, is there's a lot of glue ups. I mean, mind you, with wood, those glue ups have to be in clamps for a lot longer, but just the idea of contact cement and then, you know, fun you know, placing something exactly where it needs to be is a similar process. And that's yeah. something we haven't discussed in Armor about adding leather to leather because we really just don't want to send you um, with a whole bunch of brain damage -y glue. Oh yeah, that's it is really stick stinky. It to, yeah. It's horrible. Um, but, but you can bulk up your armor and give it a little more body that way um, when, you, when you're doing anything with structure, like what Kim's got here. Uh, the glue ups are essential. So do you want to talk about what's inside the box? Yeah. So this box was designed for kind of two main things to be used in it. So it has a lot of things that might be used that if I was to take a class somewhere and want to bring all my hand tools to it. So it's like a carrying case of all my nice little tools. Um, or it currently is being used to hold all my leather working tools, which is really nice to have them all contained because prior to that they were spread out in all sorts of cardboard boxes. So originally when you designed this, was the intent you're going to carry your woodworking tools? Or was it leather tools? Or I you kept had it a little ambiguous. So I, I did not fully design it out for one or the other. So I have 
what would you call it, where there's all sorts of little loops on one side that you can just slide in sort of um, all sorts of types of shapes? I don't know. Um, just sort of a general modular design. Yeah. So sort of what I was just now trying to describe. Let's see if I can find the right angle here. So this is sort of all these little tool loops. Focus. There we go. Yeah, I'll try keeping it That's still. beautiful. So it has just some open pockets so that you can just kind of see things, but that way not everything has to rest right on the bottom. And I mean, like sort of like these dividers is a really easy crossover tool. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I would encourage my armor students to make if they're into making armor regularly, so at least you can have your toolkit with you everywhere you go. And it's kind of fun to, like, the process of making this, I did a lot of it in a class and really gained the set of skills, but then it was a lot of time beyond that, and one of the places I most commonly did my sewing was in a ferry line. So I would just sit outside the car on the hood oh, yeah. and just because you can do a certain amount, I'm just used to woodworking and having all my big power tools, and that's not mobile. It can't go on right. a quiet um, weekend trip, you know, weekend trip to the San Juan Islands. And so I really enjoy <laughs> um, having a new skill set that lets me, you know, go somewhere where I ha go to a place that is actually one of my quieter places that I spend a lot of time with my family, yeah. and get to slow down. And I feel like leatherworking is one of those things for me. Yeah, I found whenever I'm doing my leather working, um, there's a certain point where you've sat down, you've done all the layout, you've done all the components, and you really just need to find like a quiet time to do your sewing. Yeah. And um, that part's really peaceful because progress happens almost immediately, and you get to zone out. And, and really there's lots the that is not quiet with let me make sure that's clear with uh, like leather working and saddle stitching there is a lot of banging to get all of these thick going through two layers of leather yeah. um, all those little holes <laughs> yeah this is a significant amount of hammering whenever yeah. you do a rivet whenever you've got to punch your holes um, do not don't try to just sew straight through the leather you want to pre pierce your holes we will cover that in another video, but for those of you who are thinking you just start sewing, that will destroy your hands. Yeah. So you sit there with a hammer and a chisel and you just work your way through your entire perimeter. And the chisels, one of the fun little things was, is, as I was oh, saying, you so make a lot of cases for things. So of course you start making cases for um, your leather tools. Yeah, that's nice. You want to show that to the camera? Yeah. Look at that go. So good pretty little simple case. And that keeps your chisels sharp and it prevents them from puncturing the things inside your tool case. So, and your hands when they go. <laughs> oh yes, and your hands. Um, what should I, where should I go next? Should I talk more about making the case or what are you thinking? Um, what, what was the hardest challenge when you were doing this project? The amount of time, honestly, that, time. yeah, okay. it, you had to really stick with it. I mean, to do these bottom seams, it's just a really uncomfortable place to sew. So you had these things and they weren't yet built out and they're big and floppy. And um, so you just like, I mean, I would say each one of these seams probably took an hour to two hours in each, you know, on these long sides sure. to saddle stitch. So it was just a lot of showing up. <laughs> and, and doing it. Um, yeah. Okay.